In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create your links and tools page for your class website. Now, I've switched over to my Spanish class site because I haven't done this page yet, and I wanted to show you how it works. This one is a bit more complex. We'll be changing the layout. We'll be adding some text boxes, things like that. So I'm going to make a little bit longer video this time. All right, to begin, I need you to go up, as usual, to add a new page. And we're going to call this one Links and Tools. Now in real life, uh, in your future classroom, you probably will have a links page with lots of resources for your students. I don't know that uh, you would necessarily have a tools page where you describe the technologies you use. It just depends on what you're requiring your students to bring with you or to have at home or whatever. Uh, or if, you, if your parents are curious, in which case you might uh, post something like this on there. All right, so I created that page. Here I am in edit mode, and I need to give it a two-column layout. That's what I'm asking for. So, surprise, we go to layout. And you can choose either of these two-column layouts. We've got two-column simple or the regular two-column here. I'm going to choose this one. And you'll see that it now changes the outlines in my page so that I have some different areas to work with. I'm going to start with a really basic summary up here at the top to kind of introduce what's happening. I don't want to say resources, let's say technologies. There we go. There we go, and I think I'll say we over here instead of I because they'll be doing most of it. Haha. -ha. All right, so we're going to start on the left side in our left column, uh, and we're going to use um, text boxes for this because it keeps it really pretty and nice and organized. So we're, we need to put something in the page. That means we go to which menu? Insert. Okay. So we go to insert, text box, and you get this little pop up window. I'm going to call this one Websites, and then I'm going to start listing the websites that I might have my kids use. Now, I already went out, did some research, found some websites that could be fun, uh, and these could be very content-rich websites, or they could be websites where kids can go to play games, uh, or even to make online flashcards or something like that. So there are lots of options here. Sky's the limit. Basically, for this assignment, I just want you to explore and find cool stuff. So I'm going to come over here to this Google Doc that I made, and I'm going to start copying over websites. Now, here's what I want you to notice. I've got a title for each website, I've got a link, and then I've got a description. This is what I mean by annotated in your assignment description. I want a description of what students will find at that website. As a parent, I really don't like it when people give my children websites to go to and I have no idea what's on those websites. So it's really nice to provide a quick description so that kids and parents know what they're getting into. So I'm going to start by copying over the title of this website and I'll show you why I'm doing it in this order in just a minute. Paste that in there, hit enter, and then I'm going to copy and paste in my annotation. There we go. Now I've asked you to create what I call pretty links. Um, when we go back over here, this is not a very pretty link. Uh, it's got lots of slashes and lots of dots and things like that. And some of them are even worse if we're getting further into a website, uh, kind of a few layers in, they get longer and longer and uglier and uglier. So I'm going to give my students a pretty link, and this is how you do it. First of all, I'm going to copy the website, the web address. Then I'm going to come back over here to my links and tools page. Now, I'm going to make the title of this link my link. That's how I'm going to make it pretty. So to do that, you select that title, and then we're going to click on this little chain link right here. That's how I make a hyperlink in Google Sites. So I click on that chain link, and I get a couple of options. First of all, I can choose a Sites page. That's what I use if I want to link to another page within my website. The next one is the one I'm going to use, and that's web address. So I want my students to go out to the web. You can see that the text that will be displayed is that title that I highlighted. 
and then I'm going to paste in the link to the actual URL. Now I personally prefer to open the link in a new window down here at the bottom because I want my students to be able to get back to my website really easily and I don't want them to have to click back a bunch of times to do so. So this way it'll just open in a pop-up window or a new tab and I really don't have to worry about my students getting lost. So I click that button, click OK, and you'll see now, if I click on this once, you'll see that I've got that title linked out to the website I'd indicated earlier. So for your assignment, you're going to keep going. You're going to do five of these websites. I'm not going to do that during the tutorial because I think you can just rewind it and watch this again if you need to. Uh, but you'll end up with five websites in this box and then you'll click Save. Now, this is ugly. Why does it look like a big gray box? This is just a gadget. Uh, it's something we insert into the website or the web page. It's kind of a placeholder. Uh, I'm going to show you this when I click Save. Look, it looks just fine. There's my text box. There's the text. Look, when I mouse over it, I can tell it's a hyperlink. Um, so once you save it, it looks fine. When you go into Edit, we get that gray box again. That's so that I, as the programmer, quote unquote, of this website, can uh, kind of manipulate it, make changes, uh, change the settings, things like that. So I'll show you how to do that really fast. If I click once on this text gadget, you'll see this little menu that pops up. This menu allows me to change the settings, which I'll show you in a minute, um, align it differently, so I can align it left, center, or right, wrap text around it, all of that stuff we could do with a picture before we can do with this gadget. So if I go into properties here, ah, look at that, that's familiar. So this is where I can go in and change the size, change the formatting, maybe I had a typo, and so I can come back in here and change that. All right, so I'm going to save. We're now no longer afraid of the big gray box. And now I'm going to come over here in the right column. This is where I'm going to add my tools section. We're going to do this in a pretty similar way. So I'm just going to insert a text box. I'm going to call this one tools. And now this is where I want you to go out and find technologies that you could use, actually use, not just pretend you're going to use, but actually use in your future classroom. And what I've asked you to do is to find at least two that are specific to your discipline. And I know that can get a little tricky. So just do your best. Um, some of you will have very obvious ones. Like, for example, in physical education, you might use some digital calipers. Great. Um, history, we get a little bit trickier as we try to think of technologies that are specific to your discipline. So I'd love for you to look for um, simulations that uh, students could go through, um, virtual museums. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that we could use. Uh, and, you know, if you want to use kind of generic technologies, I'll show you what I've done over here. Um, I'm going to scroll down to my tools section. Most of mine as a Spanish teacher are pretty generic. I could have put in here something like Rosetta Stone. Uh, I, I have mixed feelings about using Rosetta Stone. But anyway, um, I could have put in something like that that's specific to learning a language. But I really ended up with more kind of generic technologies in mine. But you'll notice that my applications of these technologies are very specific to my discipline. Okay, um, I do have some things in here like mobile devices with Spanish apps, and I named a couple of specific apps that I would have my students use. Um, some of these technologies I, to be honest, put on here because I wanted you to go play with them. Ha <laughs> ha. All right, so I'm going to copy and paste the tools that I chose. All right, and now if these have websites, I'd really like you to actually put the web address on here as well. So for Google Voice, for example, uh, I'm going to come in here, do web address, voice.google.com, open in a new window, and click OK. So make those pretty uh, links again. So if you actually did this on your website, your students would might like to get a little preview of what you're asking them to do. 
Now, podcasting might be a little trickier, but I could send them to a website or an article that explains what podcasting is or how podcasting is used in a world language classroom. Um, so yeah, I've put some technologies on here. I've made them as specific to teaching my discipline as I possibly can. Um, if you put PowerPoint on here, for example, that you're going to teach using PowerPoint, that I would consider a totally generic technology. Um, so you're going to need to find some more specific ways within your discipline to use technology, if that makes sense. So again, this is your chance to go out to explore, to really see how technology is being used in your field to teach students. When you're all done, you're going to save that text box, and again, we get that big, ugly gray box. And then we're going to come down here to the bottom. Now, I've got this uh, layout that has the top and the bottom. Um, if you didn't do it this way, you can put this information that I'm about to paste on here anywhere you want to. Uh, but basically, I want you to find at least one reference. Where are you getting your information from? So I've put in here some reference information for a great book about uh, using technology to teach languages. I think it's fantastic. So I'm just going to copy and paste the information for that right over here. Um, but there are amazing websites out there and articles out there. Go ahead and use Google Scholar and search for some, some uh, articles that are really talking about how technology is being used in your field. I gave you this assignment over a weekend so that you would have the time to really do this, put some time into this part of the assignment um, and come up with something really cool, get some new ideas. All right, so that's about how you do this page. We titled it Links and Tools. We did the layout and chose a two-column layout. We inserted some text boxes, and we added information and links to those. All right, we click Save. We get this lovely page, and I'm going to finish this out so you can see it as an example with our little reference down at the bottom, and we're good to go.